Responsible and robust mineral exploration is the lifeline of the global mining industry. As the demand for metals and minerals continues to grow and the global economy strives to move towards a cleaner, greener future, our industry has an increasingly critical role to play. It's a role that requires responsible practices, collaborative partnerships, and innovation, now more than ever. For over 100 years, the Association for Mineral Exploration has represented, advocated, protected, and promoted the interests of thousands of members engaged in finding and developing mineral exploration projects here in BC and across the globe. To kick off each year, we bring the mineral exploration industry together at the world's largest mineral exploration conference, AME Roundup. We set the trends for the year ahead. Hosted by explorers for explorers, Roundup is an opportunity to connect, exchange ideas, and inspire new projects that are critical to a strong economic future and sustaining vibrant regional and global economies for generations to come. As a voice for the industry, our vision is a vibrant, respected, and growing mineral exploration sector in BC. One that attracts global capital and leads the world in responsible exploration practices, champions smart geoscience, and provides mutual benefits to all stakeholders. We are a valued source of information dedicated to supporting our members by sharing best practices, providing interactive professional development opportunities throughout the year, and building trusted tools that help make discoveries and ensure projects prosper. British Columbia is a center of excellence for mineral exploration, and now is our time to thrive. Join us at AME. We share your passion, your perseverance, and your creativity. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the 38th annual uh, celebration and awards of excellence in mineral exploration and our gala, and it's for the first time, it is virtual. My name is Rob McLeod. I am the CEO of Black Wolf Copper and Gold, and I am the past chair of AME, and I am one of your two hosts this evening. And I'm Vanessa Pickering, and I manage investor relations at Orzone Gold Corporation, and we're very pleased to have you here tonight. It's our pleasure to celebrate and honor individuals who have contributed to BC's mineral exploration and development community. These individuals and teams, through their efforts in exploration, development, and outreach, are representative of that theme, having made or facilitated the discovery and creation of new mines. We thank our award winners for their contributions to the strength of the minerals industry in BC and Canada and for their legacy. We would like to acknowledge that AME's annual Celebration of Excellence Awards takes place on unceded Coast Salish territory. Tonight we are coming to you from the pipe shop in North Vancouver on the traditional lands of the Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh nations. At the Association for Mineral Exploration, uh, our motto is have a safe day every day. And we start every meeting that we have with either a safety or a diversity message or both. And so tonight I am going to give a safety message for all of you. Uh, there's many people that are watching uh, the gala tonight that are active in mineral exploration in BC. And most of us have seen that things are really booming in our industry. In fact, it is hard to find uh, uh, talented people. So there's a lot of new explorers that are in the industry. Look after them this year. Be safe around helicopters. Be safe with slip and falls. Uh, a, a late buddy of mine who was a prospector from Smithers, British Columbia, Bruce Anderson, when I was new in this business, he taught me this line I'll never forget, and I share, always share with my crews, never risk your life for a rock. So be safe out there. We don't want to have any incidents or injuries or fatalities in British Columbia. It's the most important thing that we do. Now, on the topic of safety, AME and the Prospectors and Developers Association of Canada and the Canadian Diamond Drilling Association, they presented 57 different organizations with the Safe Day Every Day Award throughout the country. And this is for no lost time incidences in 2019. So we are honored to recognize and congratulate two of the recipients of the Safe Day Every Day Award. 
One is uh, Bort Longyear, uh, their diamond drilling company. They achieved, listen to this, more than 1.2 million hours without a lost time injury. And I tell you, I've been around drills my entire career. It is a dangerous business. So congratulations to them big time. And also the Wallbridge Mining Company, they, uh, they have advanced stage projects in Ontario for over 177,000 hours without a reportable injury. We'd also like to recognize and thank the 2020 Awards Committee for their great efforts in pulling tonight off. Ed Ballin, Chair, David Caulfield, Vice Chair, Henry Almack, Rob Karn, Jennifer Pell, Steve Robertson, and Adam Simmons. We would also like to welcome some other VIPs, Dr. Michael Pezum, the son of the famous Murray Pezum, uh, who one of our awards is named after. He'll be joining us later on this evening. And we would also like to give a special hello to Andre DeRozan Spence, the widow of the late Colin Spence, uh, who is viewing the gala uh, online. And also, we would like to, and this is, these are big ones, you know, it's, a, it's a, a tough time for AME this year because we get most of our revenue from the Roundup Conference. And we didn't have an in-person Roundup this year, so we really rely on sponsors. So I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna promote a couple of stocks here to you. Uh, and one is our silver sponsor, Dolly Varden Silver. Dolly Varden trades on the Venture Exchange under DV. They have uh, the largest and most advanced pure play silver projects in British Columbia. And I know you're expecting silver to go to 50 bucks an ounce. You wanna be exposed to this metal and what better way than Dolly Varden Silver and their Dolly Varden Silver Mine and their Torbrit deposit in Northern BC. Uh, additionally, I would like to give a shout out to two law firms. Now, when my friend Vanessa, when she wants to go and sue somebody, she chooses either Castles or Faskins Law. And also, if we're gonna maybe do some other like corporate law, do some financings, indigenous law, these are two, please solicit these barristers and solicitors, if they still call them that in Canada, Faskins, and Castles as sponsors. And finally, this is some self-promotion, Black Wolf Copper and Gold, our flagship Niblack project in Southeast Alaska, which has copper, gold, silver, and zinc. We've been pulling off just booming copper intercepts recently. Check out our website and uh, most recent press releases. We trade on the Venture Exchange under BWCG. So, Vanessa, you look beautiful tonight. Thank you. What, I'm gonna ask you a question. What is my favorite part of being in a virtual event? Um, I think it would have to be that you can see me, obviously. Yeah, uh, that, you nailed it. That was number one. That That's was number second. one. Um, sweatpants, I'm gonna go for sweatpants. That's no, it. You're, you're wrong. It's actually that there is nobody here to, uh, basically we don't have to hear the crickets from nobody laughing at are jokes, which you're probably not laughing at home and saying, Rob, get on with it. So we will, but actually yeah, I'd like to find out from all of you, what is your favorite part of a virtual event? Mm. So we will be asking that question, but also we have people that are joining us from all over the world. Let's put up a word cloud and see where everybody is from. So go to your codes, pull out whatever device you're on, and uh, tell us which city that you are viewing from. And I know there's gonna be some people from down under, from Latin America, a special shout out to my buddy Lance Hubbard, my old neighbor from Stewart, who's watching from Costa Rica. Big shout out to my friends, my peeps in Hyder and Stewart, BC. Everybody type in their answer. Everybody from Hyder, they're madly using the rotary dial phone. Oh, come H. on. Maybe somebody from the Bambori project in Burkina Faso. Crossing fingers. Or I would, I would you know what, I would accept Winnipeg, Manitoba, my hometown. Okay, yeah, may let's... Maybe, maybe there's some front that are coming in from the Yukon. Anybody from Alaska? Anybody from jail? <laughs> maybe Kingston? I think they would have to do that by collect call, Rob. Where, where they're all from? 
Well, there's probably lots that are coming in from British Columbia. We know that, again, there's going to be lots of different viewers that are in that we have winners that are from all over uh, the province and as well as around the world. So um, oh, I'm excited we, to see we got 39 or 40. We can't read it. I'm sure that most must be calling in from Stuart. I know there's a lot of fans of one of our award winners. I wonder, do you think, okay, let's, do you want to guess? Who's the biggest city? Where's the biggest? Surrey. <laughs> I was going to go for like London, UK or something like that, but you know, Surrey works too. It's pretty maybe, big. Uh, Toronto's still like super locked down. So maybe it's everybody from Toronto. It's a beautiful yeah. sunny day here down in Vancouver. So like, yeah. if you're watching this, what's the matter with you? You should be outside. I, I know. I hope you took your phone outside and you're on your, you know, you're on the beach with your headphones and your mask. They're all, they're all here for the swag, for, for the silver bars. Holy. Van is what? Oh, from SK Creek. Wow. Look at all these. North Van. Holy. Nice. In Vancouver. Sun Peaks. Thunder uh, Bay. Katsi Natiote. Welcome. We're Cabbage we're Town. We McKenzie. do have someone from Toronto. Even Thunder Bay. Cabbage Town. Welcome. So um, now we're going to be asking another question. What is your favorite part of a virtual event? Okay. And, you know, with COVID, we all went from like, remember a year ago, people didn't want to go on Zoom because the Chinese are going to steal all our information and stuff. But now it's basically all we do. So everybody type in, what is your favorite part of a virtual event? I know what I, you know what I do? What? I punish my children with it. Do you? You make yeah, them and there's like a hundred percent chance they're not watching this right now. Yeah. But if uh, if say they don't clean their room, I make them come on to an industry function. Oh my gosh, I think my favorite part is you know and you can mute and go off camera because I'm usually advancing the slides for my boss. Um, I go on mute and I race to the fridge and grab a snack or something like that. And usually it's perhaps I'm in sweatpants. Not today, though. Not today. No, you can uh, you can turn the sound off, maybe, or sometimes, you know, body noises happen sometimes, so maybe you can mute it if any of those are coming. But, uh, oh, okay. honest, what, what's honestly, the... I'm starting to get a little bit tired of the virtual. COVID's the end's in sight. Everybody, make sure you go get your vaccine. Even you anti-vaccine conspirators. Keep us all safe, please. Please. I got my vaccine yesterday. Mm. I'm Team Pfizer. I am Team AstraZeneca. So now we're going to have to fight about it. How, how are the blood clots? Uh, a zero as of right now, but I'm not entirely sure. I think. Not yet. But they, they might be coming. Okay, so what is everyone's favorite part of a virtual event? I'm popcorn while you're, you know doing a presentation, flip-flops. For me, also, it's crawling out of bed five minutes before the meeting starts. Um, let's see. So one of the most famous dogs in mineral exploration is walking around her stage right now. Her name is Petal the Vigla, and she's around looking for snacks. Oh, okay, here we go. The favorite part of the virtual event, not wearing heels, and I hear you on that, whoever put that, because I'm wearing heels for the first time in a year, and I got to tell you, it's not great. Um, it's multitasking. Good. Yeah. Wearing, finding the mute button. I'm sure, I wonder if anybody's muted us. Probably Fewer thought. brokers. <laughs> I guess one. There's no way brokers are watching this. They're out on the golf course right now. Oh, no mask required when you're doing virtual, so that's... Uh, uh, yeah, I, not wearing pants, of course. And just a reminder, if you're going to send pictures to Twitter, please wear pants in your pictures. Remember, so, hashtag AME Awards Gala. Snacks to myself. Oh, God, these are the best. These are the best uh, answers ever. So, And we do want to give acknowledgement to a couple of our special visitors. One, we want to give a shout out right from Vancouver. She's probably having a shot of Uzo and maybe having some Spanakopita. That is our chair, Jill Salinas. She is the, uh, she's been on the board since 2013. I was previously chair. She was uh, my vice chair, so we worked together a lot. She's absolutely wonderful. She's the executive director for the Center of Training Excellence in Mining, where she uses her project management 
and partner engagement skills to facilitate collaborative and innovative training for mining in BC, particularly with a lot of indigenous uh, worker training. And also, big shout out to the Minister of Energy, Mines, and one other thing I forget that's in his ministry because they change it a lot, and that is Minister Bruce Ralston, who's apparently a trivia buff. And it'd be a remarkable coincidence if Bruce won. And also, coincidentally, Horgan announces that maybe he's given us a couple more percentage points for charity flow-through premiums. Wouldn't that be a weird thing, hey? Well, it'd be certainly useful. Okay, so now that we know a little bit more about of our attendees in the audience, let's get to know the 2020 AME Award recipients. And remember, don't forget to send your congratulatory comments through the chat or Twitter using the hashtag AME Awards Gala, and we're going to feature your tweets at the end of the gala. Okay, so our first award for the evening is AME's oldest award, and it was first presented in 1977, and that is the HH Spud Hustis Award, which recognizes excellence in prospecting and mineral exploration. The award is presented to those that have made a significant contribution to the mineral resources of BC and or the Yukon through the original uh, uh, application of prospecting techniques and or geoscientific technology. So the winner of, uh, of the Spud Hustis Award, I've uh, known the winner since uh, I started my career. He is one of the best geoscientists that this province has ever produced. He's also as funny as heck. He's got a big, wonderful family that are following in his footsteps. And his, comp his recent discovery for which he's winning this award, he recently sold that company to one of the world's largest gold producers, Newmont Mining. The board of directors is pleased to recognize Charlie Gregg with the 2020 Spud Hustis Award. I was born and raised in BC, and BC has a spectacular geology because it's so diverse. It's spectacularly exposed in many places. The state of the saddle project had been on the shelf for about two years when I got involved. So the markets were sort of down and financiers behind it plugged a fair amount of their own cash into it with uh, no real reward. You know, at that stage, it, it, it was just the doldrums, and I just happened to come across a presentation that recognized the potential um, that was evident in some of the soil geochemistry where ultimately the discoveries were made. In 2016, I kind of personally financed a short, but, you know, pretty expensive little uh, property evaluation as we were uh, thinking of taking this public and we had a few roadblocks on the way but managed to get it public you know with a bit of work doing soil geochemistry with one of my other kids actually involved and a couple of other young young geos uh, and prospector and a prospector um, we did a recommend recce mapping and you know it kind of cemented my belief that this was going to be an exciting goal play with some further work in the following s season really with more geology um, and also some geophysics and then ultimately of course uh, some diamond drilling that led to the Saddle South uh, gold silver vein discovery and then the year following that um, you know we had some hints in in the geology and the geophysics that we were onto something uh, a little different and a little bigger and with a little more copper and also a lot of gold the Saddle North discovery was made so that happened really in 2018. When you're scrolling through that and you see this string of high grade gold values you know on your assay spreadsheet you know for the discovery uh, hole such as saddle south in 2017 uh, you know that's pretty darn exciting um, you know nerve-wracking too <laughs> trying definitely but an amazing process and uh, and you could see it it actually works so that's that's why this one has been you know, particularly exciting and rewarding Uh, the greatest thanks has to go to my family, my wife Bernice, and my six kids. Uh, you know they put up with a lot of uh, a lot of years, 
a lot of absences. Um, so I really appreciate the support they've given me throughout uh, my many years in the business. Uh, they've done that with very few complaints and uh, you know they've also participated in this business with me uh, some at the very start my wife was uh, out in the field with me and then more laterally some of my kids have been uh, working with me out in the field so thanks to them it uh, has made things much more enjoyable over the years um, i'd also like to thank my parents uh, who've uh, who supported me all the way along my late father jim and my my lovely mother Jean, who's, uh, I think, still watching this show. She's 99 years old. So thanks, Mom, uh, and thanks, Dad. Um, as you might expect from uh, those of you that know me a little bit, uh, you might uh, expect me to express more than just my thanks. Um, you might also expect me to express my opinion on a number of fronts, but don't worry. It's all good. I'll keep it clean and positive uh, for a change. Anyway, when I first started in, uh, in exploration, as, awesome. um, when I was 25, uh, it was a lot of fun for me. It was also it was fun because, because I was working with, <laughs> with a lot of geos that I loved, that loved, like me, being out of doors, surrounded by some amazing scenery, learning more about geography, history, and parts of our amazing and also the Yukon. So, uh, uh, you know, seeing wild animals in their natural habitat, learning about exploration and this great treasure hunt that we're involved in as our day job. Um, so, you know, that's that's that that job that we we work at. It's the ultimate game. It's a huge challenge, both physically and intellectually. And you know, it's just the wonderful, uh, the most wonderful aspect of the work that we do. Um, you know, what, all, what was also enlightening for me when I first started, and it's something that I learned from some excellent and passionate uh, mentors that I had early on in the game, um, you know, was that the ex exploration process was so much better and so much more successful if you had a little bit of fun as you were doing it. Um, as I've gained more experience over the years, you know, I've also seen that having that fun uh, during the game, yes. so, you know, the fun goes hand in hand with good production, and with the, uh, with the success, whether or not you're making a, an amazing discovery or not. Anyway, that brings me to the point where I just should make mention of a few people who helped teach me those lessons. Um, just to, just going to take a few seconds here. Initially, that those included Joan Greta and Rob Karn. I uh, didn't realize Rob was on the awards committee, uh, but his wife Joan was my first boss in my first season in the business. And I moved with Joan to work with Rob and Archer Cathro up in the Yukon. Um, there, the late Al Archer and the late Bob Cathro established a culture of hard work, but uh, their culture also included a lot of fun, and we've kind of continued on with that. So thanks to those people. Uh, and in the second, sort of a second phase of my career, while pursuing what you know might be termed as sort of a more purely geological phase while supported by the Geological Survey of Canada, I was fortunate to work for and with a number of very, very good people, most notably Jim Monger and Bob Anderson, two excellent geologists and great people who are incredibly passionate about their work and whose enthusiasm was infectious. They also taught me a hell of a lot about, about rocks. Uh, I also, at that time, I was fortunate to work closely with my master thesis supervisor, a truly world-class geologist named Dick Armstrong, uh, the late Dick Armstrong. Finally, I'd like to thank my many, many geological co-workers and colleagues and assistants that I've had the pleasure of working with in the exploration business, not just here in BC, but in a variety of company, countries across the, world, the planet. Uh, you know, I hope that they can share in some small way the joy and satisfaction that this generous honor brings. Thank you very, very much. Congratulations, Charlie. I didn't even know that we shared a bond of Archer Cathro. I also worked with Archer Cathro for about seven and a half years. And I agree with you that, you know, how to do things right and getting taught all of those things by that group really has made me into the invest relations I am today. But really, congratulations, Charlie. It seems like you've had a great people around you and you've learned a lot. Uh, so, 
Was anyone paying attention to Charlie's video? And did anyone notice the poster on the wall in, in that? Let's see who is paying attention. So what poster can be found on HH Spud Hustis 2020 recipient Charlie Gregg's wall? Is it Michael Jordan, Elvis Presley, John Horgan, or Che Guevara? I, I see that half of uh, these people are maybe on the left side of the spectrum. Actually, maybe all of them are. I know Michael yeah. Jordan said that Republicans buy shoes, too. That's why he never got political. Really? Yeah. Wow. And Elvis? Was, I thought Elvis was Elvis just Elvis about vote? eating snacks. Why Elvis not? liked the peanut butter and banana sandwiches. I'm a fan, too. Yeah, I have to admit that I'm Uncle, a fan. Uncle Vernon loved it. Okay, we've got 49 answers coming in. Who is it? Was anyone paying attention? I was when I watched it, so. Okay. Get those answers in. Win that 10-ounce Dolly Varden silver bar. It's going to be a collector's item. Oh, Che Guevara. There it and was, che. you guys were paying attention, you know? 44 people got that one right. Very impressed. Anyways. Now on to the second award of the evening, the Murray Pesham Award. The Murray Pesham Award recognizes perseverance and success in financing mineral exploration. This award is presented to a minerals industry financier who has made significant contribution to the mineral exploration and mining community. Murray Pesham helped discover some amazing mines. Does the crowd know which ones that he discovered? Let's go to another Kahoot quiz. What two famous Canadian mines did Murray Pesham help discover? Was it Eskay Creek and Hemlo? Eskay Creek being here and Skeena. Skeena has Eskay now, right? Skeena yes, has they do. Eskay Creek and really? they also have Snip. They do. So is it Eskay Creek and Snip? Is it La Ronde in Quebec and Eskay Creek or Snip and Macassa? I forget which one Macassa was, Rob. Yeah, oh, Macassa is operated by Kirkland Lake Mines now, is in Kirkland Lake, Ontario, and is they've mined millions and millions of ounces there. But okay. Murray, those were you know he's Murray had a lot of companies on the go back in the '80s. That was kind of the way you'd have a shop and you'd have about ten or twelve different juniors on the go. And there's there's one really famous story. And apologize to you know, any of you in the industry that have heard this one before. But Murray was sitting in his office and he was talking to a, a broker and he goes, yeah, you should really be buying some stock. You know, all this, this core is coming out of the ground. It's never been so glittery. And the broker's like, you're not out at the, the camp right now. I'm like, yeah, I'm right out by the drill. And he opens up his window and there's like a jackhammer going out in the street down below and he holds the, the headphone outside and says, hey, listen, you can hear the drill going. And I guess the broker did go out and buy some stock. Hmm. I would try that, but you can't roll the windows down in most of the downtown offices. Otherwise, you hermetically sealed need buildings. All the help I can get. If well, the, the Wolf of Pow Street, SK Creek and Hemlo. And two of the most world-class best deposits in Canada. And Murray was part of the discovery of both. So really well, remarkable and hence why the award is named after him. And it's now our pleasure to welcome Michael Pesham, Dr. Michael Pesham, son of the late Murray Pesham, to join us to present this award tonight. Firstly, I would like to thank the Association for Mineral Exploration for continuing to recognize my father's work in the form of the Murray Pesham Award. It is a great honor. For many years, he was the driving force behind the establishment of the Vancouver Stock Exchange as the greatest exploration market in the world. At one point, he operated 60 publicly traded companies and was instrumental in the discovery of both the Hemlo and SK Creek gold mines. This business was his life. For those of you who've never seen one, this is the first pour from the Hemlo gold mine, awarded to my father, Murray Peasant. It represents incredible perseverance. There were over a hundred drill holes made in this property and he kept financing the drill holes and kept going and ultimately they found an ore body. If you want to win this award, you have your work cut out for you. It goes to champions who have proven that they can survive no matter what. Talent, 
intelligence, dogged perseverance, resilience. These are the basic prerequisites. In an industry in which so much is beyond your control, where a drill hole is a thousand to one shot, you need to master fate itself. Lucas Lundin has done it. And that is why he is a 2020 Marie Peasant Award winner. Congratulations, Lucas. I guess my unique background is that I was basically born into the business because my father was very involved in mining ventures early on in his life. And I've been working with him for the last 30 years. So my, we did a lot, started off in the oil and gas business, spent a lot of time in the Middle East, uh, two years in Egypt, six, six years in Dubai, and then moved to Vancouver in 89. And so that's how I really got involved in the mining business. I work with quality people be able to be aggressive and in a low point of our sector and benefit from the low gold price, find good assets and maybe able to acquire it. And if we're lucky enough to hit the cycle right, you know, you have uh, some patience and then a joint venture or sell out. You know, I think it's mostly timing of this. Yeah, that's definitely what's uh, first major success uh, is uh, probably uh, Michael Baja Lumbrera in Argentina, early 1990s. Because I was so green and so didn't know very much. I didn't know what porphyry copper was. I didn't know anything, but I understand it was very, very big. And I got quite excited. And we, we were able to acquire the asset rather in competition because uh, all the majors with more knowledge was too far to the coast, not, not high grade enough. Gosh. So I thought the mining was quite easy because I started 10 million in total. We were able to sell it in 95 for 500 million dollars. You know, so, Beginner's luck. So have surround yourself with good people you trust, and secondly, large assets if you can, because it's as as much work to put a gold mine is one million ounces or five million ounces. You know, but easier said. Large asset, higher grade, but that's, that's super easy to say, very hard to do. <laughs> Today is the biggest session is to get a social license. In the old days, we, we you know we thought it was good enough to build an asset, pay your taxes. You know. I guess we haven't done a very good job as a mining industry trying explaining what we're doing and explaining to local society the benefits to it. But we had to help them generate local funds, very important engage the local community, and uh, if we get the uh, local region engaged and they also benefit from the mines and uh, you know social license is the most important thing. It's really fun business. And also say I think you can create law in, in, on, in employment and create law wealth in the region you work with, in the country you work with. It's, that's, I think that's quite often. And, uh, and it's a global business. So if you, if you like an adventure, mining is good. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, very happy to be here today. Unfortunately, I could be in, in presence because of this COVID restrictions. And, but uh, I'm very honored to be giving the Murray Peasant Award. That is an award that's been given to a lot of very successful people. So I'm very proud to be part of the, the Listers Club doing this. I think it's a the war is basically about perseverance in the mining business. You know, the mining business takes a long time. Go from discovery to mine find to production it could take 20 years. And even to find big deposits take a very, very long time. So, I mean, I think perseverance in a business, in this business, is a very big word and it's very important for us because all, all big success in the history of mining is perseverance. Preserve, and I, what I would say, also say, we've been involved in Argentina for the last uh, 30 years, and we, we've been working very hard on this drill program up in the high Andes. We staked the, the first claims there in 1999, and we've been drilling there for almost 20 years. We have found one big discovery called Jose Maria, and now we're drilling another deposit called Philo, and we're getting good results right now uh, on both projects. And uh, what, like, it really go back to the Murray Pleasant Award. We've been up there almost 20 years and finally getting good results, you know. And then from there, we drill it out and we do a feasibility study. And then we're going to have 
with finance and bill in his Argentina, and this uh, is going to be very large minds, but you have, have a lot of patience. So most thing we do is perseverance. So I'm very, very excited to receive this award and uh, looking forward uh, to the more drilling and finding more deposits. And I would thank the whole mining community, you know, the drillers, investors, uh, geologists, everybody involved. You know, it takes a big team to find discoveries and find new ore bodies. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you very much. Good evening. I come from a, a multi-generational mining family, but I tell you, the Lundines have been BC's most successful family. Um, Lucas's dad, Adolf Lundin, was actually one of the first winners of the same award, the Murray Pesham Award. And I tell you, uh, I don't know, Vanessa, if you saw the news this morning, Lucas's son, Adam, he's the chair of Philo Mining. They pulled off just a barn, one of the best discovery holes that I've seen in a long time, like almost a kilometer of over uh, a percent copper. So it definitely runs in the family uh, uh, with, uh, within the Lundines and also remarkable philanthropist, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of uh, charitable donations all around the globe. We know that Lucas is uh, in the, the fight of his life right now. Um, all of us in the, in the mining industry really love you and wish you all of the best in, uh, in your fight. So uh, speaking of discoveries, let's go on to our next award, which is the Colin Spence Award for Global Mineral Exploration. Maybe it will be Philo Mining coming up. So this is presented to an individual or group that has made a significant contribution to enhance mineral resources within Canada, but outside of BC, uh, or in foreign countries through the original application of prospecting techniques and or geoscience. So pay close attention to this video, like what a remarkable application of science, of geophysics and geology to make a discovery under four hundred meters of cover. It is called the Haveron discovery, or Haveron. I was ha saying it wrong. Haveron. But, and uh, let's, do you know where it is? Did you? Uh, I watched you know, the videos, Rob. I did my homework. What region? Let's ask the audience. Where is this deposit located? Is it in the BC? Is it in the Yukon? Could it be in Eastern Australia or could it be in Western Australia? So, Kian, what, where do you think it is? Maybe there's more than one. There's often some of these names of deposits like the El Dorado or the Silverado. There's Silverado near Stewart, oh, Silverado down in Peru. There's Red Mountain down in Nevada or down in California, isn't it? I, I've worked on three different Red Mountains in my career. <laughs> Really? There's one in the Yukon, there's Red Mountain yep. up in Alaska, there's Red Mountain outside of Stewart. So, yeah, often, especially the old timers, there, there wasn't a whole lot of ingenuity sometimes with the, or, or creativity when it came to news. Lots of ingenuity, not a lot of creativity. So, everybody, Key, we got 38 answers so far. Where could it be? Western Australia. So congratulations to all of you that knew that answer or Googled it correctly. Well. So um, uh, the board of directors is pleased to recognize two remarkable individuals, Callum Baxter, director of Great Land Gold and Fraser McCorkadale with Newcrest Mining with the 2020 Colin Spence Award. The Haveron deposit is located 45 kilometres east of Newcrest's Telford Gold Mine, which is in northwest Western Australia. So it's in a quite remote area, part of Australia. Greatland and Newcrest's interests have been aligned since day one. Greatland wants to see rapid development of the project and 
Newcrest also want to see rapid development. So dealing with Fraser has been very easy since day one. And also the technical team that Fraser works with within Newcrest are world class. There's a lot of experience for some very big deposits. Not only do they have fantastic exploration experience, but they also have fantastic development and mining experience. And being on site at the time for myself was very exciting. Um, from a, a geological point of view, it's centered on a discrete magnetic high um, under 420 meters of post mineralization cover. What we had to do was um, intensive campaigns of logging, uh, re-logging, um, the use of lithic geochemistry, um, core scan and true scan, and um, petrology to help us build robust um, rock types which then led us to be able to develop a 3D model. The second five hole drill program was really a foregone conclusion after the results of the first four holes. And we had spectacular success with our first drill program intersecting mineralization from the first hole. And that really shows that you know, the scale of the deposit is there. And then deciding on the second five hole drill program in late 2018, we were all very enthusiastic to carry out that program and our fifth hole which was the start of the second drill program achieved a spectacular result and really attracted global attention. We were receiving telephone calls and emails from many companies across the world and wanting to know more about our discovery. And then it's the 3D inversions that really early on gave us the confidence that we had a, a sizable system because of the footprint of the model. It is a treasure hunt and I think that's why people get involved in mineral exploration for many years. It, it just becomes part of your life and it's in your blood and you're, you're always chasing the next prize. Now, with Greatland, we've been very fortunate and I've been very fortunate to have a great team that have uh, joined us on the journey and, and also a fantastic partner in Newcrest in conducting significant exploration at the project and putting a lot of effort into the, the development of the deposit at the moment. me for this prestige award. Um, what I'd like to first of all is thank Callum Baxter and and, and the team at Greatlands because what they did me for this um, was fantastic award. exploration. Um, what I'd like um, to first of all is thank Callum Baxter. We, and, we have and to the recognize the work that they did, they did and we've been um, great fantastic partners. exploration. Um, what I'd like um, to first and of all then is thank Callum Baxter. We Getting bad feedback on this line, so it's um, so we just started again. Thanks, Callum and his team. It's um, you know, they're a great team. day one until now. We've re we've enjoyed the partnership and it's let us accelerate the work that we've done. Um, as anyone knows, a discovery is not a, an individual thing, it's a, a huge team effort. And on our side of the fence, I'd like to recognize a, a bunch of people um, Ben Ackerman, Dave Finn, Cam Switzer. Anthony Harris, Jamie Williams, Derek Marshall, Alan Wilson, really have put you know a huge effort into where we where we've got to in the last eighteen months, and to take it from you know the beginning of this joint venture to now that we are actually um, it, we've got a box cut up there, and we're well and truly on our way to you know a new a new um, production centre for Newcrest and Greatland into the future. Um, I'd also like, as, as you know, as I said before, I'd like to thank my family um, from a personal point of view, my wife, Nicole, um, my three boys, Lachlan, Hamish and Campbell, who let me do what I do. Um, as we all know, we, we spend huge amounts of time away from home. Um, we're missing in action a lot of times, but without their support, you we would not be able to do what we do. And I, I thank them so much because because of that, we get to have the fun and making these discoveries is just the best thing that we possibly could do. So I'll, I'll hand it over to Callum. Thanks, Fraser. And um, thank you to the AME for the Colin Spence Award, for recognising excellence in global mineral exploration. 
Our industry is not celebrated enough and the initiative deserves much support. The Haveron discovery followed a change in thinking of where and how we look for new deposits. And it's junior and major company strengths. From Greatland's first holes in 2018 to commencement of a decline in 2021, demonstrating rapid advancement of the project. Newcrest and Greatland are deserved award recipients and I thank both teams for their efforts. Thanks also to our partners who include Sprott, Hannum, Berenberg, Canaccord and SI Capital to name a few. No doubt there are many other undiscovered very large ore bodies below cover and we continue to apply our skills in exploring highly prospective regions globally. Thanks also to my family, my wife Emma and Fortune, me with a lot of support throughout the last 30 years of mineral exploration. And Greatland very much looks forward to 2021 and beyond. Thank you. what Rob said, 400 meters below surface. That takes some skill and some finding. Okay, so now for this part of the evening, you know what would be kind of cool? I've kind of been posting some pictures here and there, but we need more pictures with everyone who's watching. And I want to see everyone's gala attire. So we should pose for the audience, Rob. We, uh, should, we and should, but also I, I do have to give a special shout out to Brandon McDonald, the CEO of Fireweed Zinc, who is my <laughs> first subscriber to my OnlyFans account. Thank you so much. You already downloaded my best photo and, uh, and have posted it on the internet. So news travels fast, Brandon. I'll get you back. <laughs> Twitter never dies, just so you know. But we should pose for the audience and get them to tell, take a selfie with us. Do we have any certain, uh, we, lost, we lost our favorite person to, or favorite animal to take a selfie with. But come on guys, we can do this. Introducing my park prospecting partner, Ed Oldebizla. Come on. Yeah. Got it. You'll see that on Twitter in just a minute, guys. That wasn't awkward, was it? It was well it was a little bit awkward. I don't think I've taken a selfie with anyone in a while. That's a that's also a lie. You are vaccinated, aren't you? I'm vaccinated. Everyone get vaccinated. We've said it before. We're going to say it again. So onwards. Sh just remember, when you're going to post your pictures, you have to use the hashtag AME Awards Gala. So now on to the next uh, award, presenting the Robert our Headley Award for Excellence in Social and Environmental Responsibility. This award is presented to an individual or group working globally who has made significant contributions or advances in the realm of social or environmental responsibility. Did you guys know that the town of Headley was named after Robert R. Headley? I actually didn't know, and I'm learning this right now. With a small population of 242 people, let's see if our attendees know which river Headley is located on. Is it located on the Fraser River, the Samilk Mean, the <laughs> Incomplo, <laughs> uh, and this, or the Stikine? Uh, oh. Maybe we should have asked what a uh, crappy 2000s pop band <gasps> is named after a small town in BC. Headley. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Not Nickelback? Ooh. Anyway. Uh, I saw the joke. Well, after the inflation numbers yesterday, they should be dime back. <laughs> Anyways, again, we're glad about virtual reality or virtual because you guys don't cricket us. It's great. Um, there's so, four big rivers. Those are, it's going to be a tough choice. Edley, BC, Gold Scarn. I don't Actually, even know how to say that third one. What's the one in blue, Rob? Um, oh, it doesn't matter because Samilkameen is 
the name of the river and I would have gotten that one wrong. The board of directors of AME is pleased to recognize Justin Himmelwright with the 2020 Robert R. Headley Award. Social and environmental values as a priority uh, is a, a part of my upbringing, I suppose, and also a part of my professional uh, experience. For me, it comes down to value system that is focused on uh, making things better for people. You know, if your organization works in that fashion, you will achieve that social responsibility. It's not so much about being social, socially responsible um, in order to further your business interests, it is the other way around. Being social, being socially responsible as a value will further your business interests. It's a good business sense thing to do, but you do it because it's something that you value. The BC Regional Mining Alliance is a very important initiative. The investment community is increasingly aware and curious and um, acknowledges the risk to projects related to Indigenous rights uh, and Indigenous title. And the best avenue to satisfy that curiosity um, uh, is to bring parties together in helping leadership and companies to understand Indigenous issues and, and um, understand uh, how Indigenous people relate to the land is actually bringing uh, the leadership of both companies and uh, Indigenous communities together to meet each other and talk about these things. And that face-to-face -face interaction uh, is really, really important. The implementation of an impact benefit agreement is where the rubber hits the road, where the benefits uh, from the project are um, brought on board by the community members, uh, where the real social license comes from. It doesn't come from the negotiation and signing of the agreement. So the critical parts uh, in impact benefit agreements and in the negotiations of impact benefit agreements is the focus on the outcomes and the implementation. But in order for the agreements to survive uh, over the long life of, of a mining operation, they need to be organic uh, and they need to address processes by which the parties will relate to each other under any foreseeable circumstance. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you, uh, Rob and Vanessa. It's a, a real honor to be here tonight. And um, uh, with uh, great humility, I, I accept the, the, the Headley Award. It's, uh, it came as quite a surprise. And I just wanted to uh, say thanks to everybody who, um, who nominated me and, and uh, supported the, the nomination. Um, I was so excited for uh, tonight's event. I, I went out and, and I got a haircut, as you can see. Looks really good. That's a joke. Everybody who knows me knows I haven't had my hair cut since uh, 1991. Uh, still the same style as you can tell in those pictures, which go back quite a few years. Um, you know, uh, the, the focus for me in this business uh, over the years has come to be about people uh, and about the effect that our work has on, on people every day. Um, and so, you know, it, it's fitting, of course, as we've seen from uh, from others uh, at the award show tonight to, to give thanks. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I wanted to uh, take the time to acknowledge uh, some people from the past and what has become a, a becoming a, a very long and storied uh, career in, in the industry. So, uh, you know, I, I got to give uh, a first thanks, I think, to a fellow by the name of uh, Mark Rigliati. Um, Rebag, as we used to call him uh, when he wasn't in camp, um, gave me one of my first jobs in, in mining exploration. Um, and um, so I got to give a tip of the hat to, to Mark because, you know, uh, look at all the damage I've done since uh, he gave me that job. So thanks, man. Um, uh, to uh, uh, a mentor of mine, uh, Mr. Robert Hallam, who's unfortunately no longer with us. Um, gave me my first job as a biologist uh, working on mining projects um, and I worked for, for uh, Bob for, 
for quite a number of years and, and I learned an awful lot from him, including the very important lesson of don't come home without the data or you're fired. Uh, so thanks, uh, Rob, for that. Um, uh, really another very uh, important person in my career uh, trajectory was a fellow by the name of uh, Harlan Mead. And some of you will probably remember Harlan, uh, quite a colorful character in our business, did a lot of time working out of his uh, uh, company shop, uh, doing projects in the Yukon was a great part of, uh, of the career curve for me. Um, a couple of really strong mentors uh, for me that, um, and still mentors for me today, uh, Mr. Jerry Asp. Uh, Jerry is a uh, member of the Canadian Mining Hall of Fame um, and um, has been a great um, guiding light for me in terms of the, the you know, the relationship between um, mining and, and Indigenous communities. Uh, Nalene Morin is another uh, great uh, mentor and inspiration for me as a current leader uh, in the mining space um, uh, in the issue of Indigenous relationships with mining companies. Uh, uh, Nalene and I have a lot of very good uh, conversations and I've learned a lot uh, from working with her uh, over the past uh, a few years. Those are just a few of the people um, from the past career uh, that have been really instrumental in, in helping me um, uh, and, and, and keeping me in, in the business. But I, I really want to give a tip of the hat tonight to, um, to, the, to the people that keep me in the business today. Uh, and it's all that we are mentoring at Skeena. Um, all of the, 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 um, the new generation that is coming into the industry. And that's been a tremendous, uh, tremendous focus. So I just want to give a couple of shout outs to uh, Jocelyn and Mika and Emily and uh, Caden, Shelby, um, Kyle, Colby or Cody, sorry, um, and Brandon. Um, these are all of the, the young folks that are working for uh, our company now, Skeena Resources. Uh, and they are a big focus of, of, of our organization in trying to create uh, the next generation of, of people that are going to carry this uh, this industry forward, uh, and um, that's the engine that that keeps me keeps me going every day, um, and keeps pushing these projects ahead. So, I want to thank you all, and and um, tip of the hat to also to uh, to Skeena Resources and the whole team over at Skeena Resources for for embracing this approach uh, in developing uh, mineral projects that puts. Uh, the values uh, front and foremost, and people front and foremost. So, thank you all uh, very much, and, and uh, really humbled to have received this award. It's great. Thank you. And a big congratulations to there you have them, the, the pride of the Kispiox Valley, Justin Himmelwright, and and real. You know, I know it's all of these awards, they are indirectly team awards. You know, we're celebrating Justin, but his company, Skeena Resources, um, in terms, they, they've taken actually what was, what has been probably the be best mine almost worldwide in the past several de decades, SK Creek, and they've really reimagined it. But it's not just the geology where they've been having success. It is that community side. It is consulting, particularly with Talpan Nation up there. And you heard, you heard it from just, this, this company um, continue, always impresses. They donated some of their mineral claims to the Wilderness Conservatory. I think that's what it's called. But like, who does that? Skeena Resources does. So big congratulations to Justin and hat tip to the entire Skeena team. So the next award for the evening is the Frank Woodside Gold Pan Award. And uh, it is awarded for distinguished volunteer service to the Association for Mineral Exploration of British Columbia, resulting in a profound impact on the success and direction of the association. Did you know that the Frank Woodside Gold Pan Award is adjudicated by the AME Board of Directors? Well, it's true. The remaining of the awards this evening, they weren't nominated by the board, they were nominated by you, the membership. And um, for AME members, I'm interested to know, and this is where I'm asking you to pack your bags because you're going on a guilt trip. How many have you written a nominations letter or support letter for an award nomination? 
So is it none yet? Is it one to five? Is it six to 10? Or you've, you've wrote, written 11 or more support letters for AME. How many have you written, Vanessa? Two. You've written two. Good for you. I also have written two letters. <laughs> Weren't you the past chair? Shouldn't you have written more? Shouldn't you have just spent a whole year writing letters and, being, and supporting Please everyone? Please don't question my volunteer <laughs> service to this association. <laughs> uh, putting in a few hours. No, seriously. Now, and here's another big one. Like, all the winners, they're all deserving. We need more diversity. We have tremendous women that are deserving of these awards. So next year, please find some award-winning recipients that will win the 2022 awards and nominate them with support letters. So most of you, 22, you're on the guilt trip. 22 of you have not written any. And thank you to those that have written letters to, um, to, to nominate. So on to the, the, uh, the winner and as uh, past chair of AME, I'm pleased to recognize an extremely deserving active volunteer that has made Roundup, which is the world's best technical show, the big success that it has been for the past couple of decades. I'm pleased to recognize Steve Irwin with the 2020 Frank Woodside Gold Pan Award. I worked with the uh, Geological Survey of Canada, which is part of Natural Resources Canada, the federal government. The most rewarding thing of that career was to work again with uh, teams of people, scientists, support staff, admin staff, again, in a very kind of common goal of trying to do our best to produce world-class science and improve geoscience knowledge of Canada and provide that to mining and mineral exploration industry as well as the general population. I think it's important for the public to understand the mining industry, geology, mineral exploration industry because it's it plays such a fundamental and important role in our everyday lives. Discovery Days is an event at the beginning of Roundup where AME opens up the, the Roundup floor to uh, the public to come in and see all sorts of things about the industry and geoscience. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, place is packed. There's tons of excited kids and a lot of excited adults too. And the more the general public knows about what we do, I think the better we are uh, in promoting our own industry and, and the benefits that we, we all share. And geologists are nice people and we care a lot. And uh, so we like to give back. The poster sessions I think are, are an integral part of the Roundup. They represent a huge amount of, of geoscience knowledge and innovation. And if people people at the conference can go there and learn an incredible amount of, of information directly from the people that are involved in it. For students and for public geoscientists that present their material at, at Roundup, it really is a, a huge component of the technical and scientific content that Roundup is famous for. I think that poster sessions really continue to contribute to that year after year. I'm really proud to have volunteered so many years with AME because each and every year that I volunteered with them, I got to work with a big team of dedicated, passionate uh, staff and, and volunteers from the industry. And together we worked really hard on a common purpose to ensure that the Roundup was the world's best uh, technical uh, mineral exploration conference and I think every year year we achieved that and that was that was proud to be part of that team it's uh Thanks, Rob and Vanessa. Um, I'm really honored to be the recipient of the AME 2020 uh, Frank Woodside Gold Pan Award. Um, when I look through the list of industry icons who are uh, previous recipients, I'm humbled. Um, they're they're giants in our in our industry. 
uh, and in geoscience. Um, I feel really privileged to have been able to volunteer so many years with AMI and be part of the annual Roundup organizing committees. Uh, every year, um, but every year, whether it was returnee committee members or, or new ones, we were all there as a team to ensure that we did our best. And every year, the Roundup was the best mineral exploration conference in the world, year after year. I, it was always a lot of work, um, a lot of fun, and it was an incredible sense of accomplishment when it was finished. Um, it was amazing to work with both the committee, but also the amazing, dedicated, hardworking uh, staff at AME that uh, put up with the committee, uh, shepherded us through, uh, and uh, made sure that uh, we got things done on time and uh, and made it made it what it was. Um, for me, being part of that uh, roundup uh, for so many years was one of the major career highlights for me in my. Uh, geoscience career. I'd like to thank AME for welcoming back to the committee year after year. Um, uh, to, I'd like to thank all the committee chairs and fellow committee members for their dedication and their passion. Uh, I'd like to thank all my colleagues who worked directly with me uh, to organize and promote uh, public geoscience uh, sessions, the poster sessions, and Discovery Day uh, at, at uh, Roundup. I'd like to thank all of the geologists, geoscientists, students who contributed so many geoscience projects and, and their passion to our sessions every year. Um, I'd also like to thank my managers at uh, the Geological Survey of Canada over the m many years uh, who supported me and gave me the time and, and the space and maybe the rope to connect with the mineral exploration industry and public to share the geoscience knowledge. Um, I'd also like to thank my family, my wife, Catherine, my son, Colin, for all of their support through the years. Um, I'm very proud to receive this award and I thank you very much. Have a good evening. And congratulations to, to you, Steve. Not only thank you for all the wonderful scientific work that you have done over the decades with the Geological Survey of Canada, but also for all of your volunteer work for the association, particularly for Roundup. We are a volunteer organization. We do employ some staff, but there are dozens and dozens of people annually that work within the industry that volunteer. So maybe you should volunteer. Uh, there too, out in the uh, the audience. So congratulations again, Steve, most deserving. Speaking of deserving, moving on, and it is a real pleasure to discuss the next award winner. But first, many of you may have been wondering what the hell Vanessa and I were talking about. That's because the wrong poll question was up there, but hey, lots of you answered it anyways. What is the Bruce Jack Gold Silver Mine named after. Bruce Jack is operated by Predium. It's a spectacular deposit, really known for its spectacular high-grade gold. Our upcoming award winner worked there not only in the 80s, but also some of the pre-development work. So it was named after, was it a hoary marmot, ice worms, a type of fish? No, it was actually named after a couple of my family members. My cousin, Bruce McLeod, who's the CEO of Sabina Resources, as well as my grandfather, who was a Scottish immigrant, came over in 1925 from old country to Stuart, British Columbia. Bruce and Jack, that's what the Bruce Jack mine is named after. All right, so moving on uh, to, uh, to the next winner um, and actually seeing who's in the lead, uh, Brent. And I'm just going to go offline. Are we doing the other poll question again, or are we going straight to Dave Barr? All right. So the next award winner is the Dave or award is for the Dave Barr Award. It is presented for excellence in leadership and innovation in mineral exploration, health, and safety. This is really special to me. This winner, he is my neighbor from Stewart. 
His mom used to work with my dad at the King Edward Hotel. His, actually, speaking about his mom, his mom used to, Dave used to have the most kicking stereo system in Stewart. His mom used to play during Christmas time. Elvis's Blue Christmas would be blasting throughout the community of Stewart. And it just really makes me, reminds me of home when I think about his family. Also, special shout out to his wife, Wanda, who's called the Wolverine for many different reasons, and to his daughter, Crystal, and his many grandkids and first great grandkids. Um, the, uh, the board of directors is pleased to announce my good friend, my neighbor from Stewart, BC, one of the finest graduates of the Stewart Elementary School, Mr. Dave Green with the 2020 Dave Barr Award. Worked in the mines 45 plus years. Yeah, I've always been a good laborer. I worked my way up to a miner, blaster, shift boss, and then eventually superintendent. Always had a safety uh, standards to work by. I tried to push it a bit. At first, health and safety was a hard thing to put forward. You had the old uh, the superintendent plus the old uh, miner's mentality where you have to get the work done no matter how you do it. Everything before was based on uh, on the bonus and, and getting the work done. And uh, we've seen a lot of bad accidents, did a lot of haywire things, and uh, it was all okay as long as we got our rounds out. Like I say, once again, we had the bad accidents, so uh, it was just the right thing to do. It's time to do things right. And uh, once again, what you allow, you approve. So, yes, that was my fault for not stopping and doing things right. Well, you have to have somebody there to push safety. You have to have that <clears throat> guy that's going to go in there and talk to the guys on their level and uh, bring forth the safety and everything else. And it doesn't take long once you put down the rules and show the guys why and explain it. That the guys will be backing you and it's a much easier job. So you have to have somebody there that's going to stand up and do something about the safety aspect of the work. You have to get the buy-in from the crews and from the company. And once you do that and you've put the rules down, everything goes pretty smooth. There's just no problem at all. Progress that's taking place is, uh, is the uh, crews uh, do start backing you once you push it. The companies now and the crews have bought in. Safety has got to come from the top. And it, it is coming from the top now. You do get the backing that you need and the guys are actually getting into a position where they will stand up for themselves and and uh, push the safety aspects of the job. Hello, I would like to thank the people who nominated me for this award. Colonel Wilson, Doug Flynn, Rob McLeod, Joab Senek, uh, Ryan Waymart, Bruce McLeod, uh, Marilyn Lacasse, and uh, Ken McNaughton. It means a lot to me that these friends helped me and could see what I was trying to do throughout the jobs, even though uh, I can be very opinionated and uh, do have a little bit of a temper. I also want to thank everyone that commented on posts on Facebook and thank my wife, Wanda, who, uh, who's on Facebook and passed the comments on to me and just generally helps me with computers. <clears throat> A uh, special thank you to the McLeod family, <clears throat> the late Don and uh, Ian McLeod, Rob and Bruce, who I've worked, through, work, worked with throughout my life. Thank you. That's it. Congratulations, Dave. Now, Dave was the first person to take me underground at Red Mountain, and his safety explana explanation is still the best. He shows pictures of other mine disasters, and he always says, this can be avoided, and we can do this safer. And he also, one of the best things that he said is, if you are scared to go underground, I will be bringing, and he goes, you never know until you get down there. And he said, I will be bringing up the back of the line, and if you don't feel right underground, something doesn't sit well with you, 
you come talk to me and I'm going to take you out and I'm not going to ask any questions or make fun of you. So Dave, you are so deserving of this award. And now for our final award of the evening, which is also just, it's a special tribute and is awarded by all the AME Board of Directors to an individual or group for their contribution to and support of exploration, discovery, and development in British Columbia and adjacent parts of the Cordillera. This year, on behalf of AME's Board of Directors, oh wait, I'm not part of the Board of Directors, but I'm part of everyone. I'm very pleased to present the special tribute award to Andy Randall, one of my very good friends, and I think I was one of the first people he worked with when he uh, came to Canada. Before we welcome Andy to the screen, which nonprofit society is Andy the founder of? And I'm going to recuse myself from an answering because I was part of the board of directors for this society when it first started. Do you know which one it is, Rob? Oh, I know. but I, And I also know that Andy, like, I don't know of anybody that does more volunteer work than, than he does for so many different causes. But, well, primarily for mineral exploration and, and, and education. Uh, he's constantly posing all this and really, really interesting stuff and innovative. And, you know, in, in fact, uh, he's getting this special tribute award. He's a really good geologist. He's going to be winning. I think this is his second award. It and is. for for AME, he's probably going to win all of them. You know, he's probably going to get the Spud Eustace Award, Murray Pezum, you name it. Andy Randall, the active volunteer and geologist geologist extraordinaire. I just love how passionate he is about educating us all in you know all ages of people on geology and uh, earth sciences in general. Anyways, Below BC was the name of the society that Andy, or the nonprofit society that Andy Randall is the founder of. And now let's welcome Andy to the screen. I created Below BC a few years ago um, because at the time there wasn't really a, a, a public outreach um, opportunities such as this where we could go out to shows, take rocks along and actually engage with the public. And it started off very, very small. That's all it was. It was a little box of minerals that I would take out, put on a table, pop-up table somewhere, and just talk to people, let them handle things. A lot of people, kids, you know, if you hand them a piece of quartz with gold in it, they've never done that before. They've never had that. As soon as you get a dinosaur bone on the table that a kid can pick up, that's it. You've, you've won them over for life. So one of the most exciting projects that we've embarked on in the last few years was our online digital museum. And what we noticed is as we were traveling around to different sites, uh, we were going out to museums in the province, um, you know, even people's private collections, and they'd have these massive amounts of rocks and minerals and mining artifacts and really, really cool stuff that generally as a member of the public or even a member of our profession, you wouldn't get to see unless you physically travel to that place. And we could go into these places with our digital camera and uh, photograph the mineral specimens that then we put up onto the website and people could interact with them. So they're 3D, you can spin them around, you can zoom in, you can learn all about the minerals and the rocks that are there. Well, to so really bring together the history of British Columbia's mining, but also the geology and how that affects our daily lives and, you know, the kind of things that we can find out there. It's, it's, it's fascinating. It's been an amazing project to work on. I had a great mentor as a child. My grandfather would take me out on weekends. Sometimes we'd skip school and uh, we'd go for walks along the beach in the UK and pick up fossils. And I always remember that it was a fantastic time to learn um, and, you know, going to museums and seeing all those kind of things with him, with family. And so um, I just decided that I wanted to try and offer that at first to, um, to other kids uh, through Below BC. And then that grew from there outwards into um, more kind of general aspects with public outreach and even supporting the industry as well. Thank you for that. And uh, thank you for everybody that's watching and sticking around this late in the evening. I really appreciate you uh, being here. So uh, 
Yeah, this was a surprise to me. I remember getting the phone call on a it was a pretty tough day and uh, it really just lifted my spirits. It's, it's, it's nice to be recognized, but uh, to uh, mimic the words of Justin now, you know, I, I, I take this humbly. Um, I do this for the, the pleasure of what I get out of it. So, you know, it takes a village. Um, Below BC wouldn't exist without everybody that's behind me. So my entire team, um, Below BC is a nonprofit. Uh, we don't actually have any employees. It's all run through my consultancy called Hive. So everybody that's uh, employed with me, they go off and they go and do these uh, crazy stints and school trips and stuff, which is fantastic. And I think everybody gets a lot of enjoyment out of that. Um, I'd also have to thank my family. Uh, I know my parents are watching right now. So, uh, hi, mom. <laughs> so, and also my husband who sat watching this with me right now as well. So he's over here as well. Oh my God. I knew I'd be the first one to cry. <laughs> Um, as I said, it takes a village. We've had a lot of supporters over the years. Um, Smithers Exploration Group, um, Britannia Mine, Pacific Museum of the Earth. Uh, obviously, uh, AME as well. They've been a massive uh, supporter of ours and allowed us to really grow. Geoscience BC were the ones that gave us a, a substantial grant a few years ago to be able to get on the road and get into all these small collections and meet these weird and wonderful and it's British Columbia. Uh, that have this semi, this other passion for rocks as well. And we've been able to get their collections online, which means a lot to us and means a lot to them as well. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, the, our sponsors as well, we, we can't do this without sponsorship. I want to give a special thank out to Independence Gold, who recently gave us some money to keep doing what we're doing. Absolute plug here. We're open to more. If anybody wants to send have below Yukon that's coming out soon as well and so we'll be launching a virtual museum for the Yukon as well in the next few months really excited about that one um yeah I mean it's just it, just fantastic to get this award and it you know I, I do a lot of this work just because I really enjoy it and thank you again for Rob and Vanessa for hosting tonight Rob I've learned a lot from you over the years good things and bad things and Vanessa mainly I've learned bad things from you but you're both doing a great job so thank you very much <laughs> Andy, you're not crying. We're crying. Hey, Vanessa, you're crying. That yeah. little uh, little tear squeaking out right here for my buddy. A Andy does so much for science, and and you heard it from him. It's it's his passion for not for the science, but also for teaching and for people. He is such a wonderful uh, and important member of of our industry. And also, it isn't an official award but he beat out Brandon McDonald for the Best Beard Award. So congratulations on the Best Beard Award. Again, Andy, you're the big winner. Brandon, never Better a bride, luck. always a bridesmaid. Isn't that the, 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 uh, the saying? Better luck next year, maybe? Maybe next year. Um, so speaking of outreach, AME has also granted awards to two highly regarded organizations to continue with their educational programs. The Britannia Mine Museum, of which I'm, I'm a director and immensely proud of, they have received $10,000 towards its educational program and also the Minerals Ed program, which does tremendous work throughout the problem. They've been granted $10,000 to support delivery of the Junior Geologist Virtual Classroom Workshop in 2021. Congratulations to both Britannia and to uh, Minerals Ed. Everybody, this includes the official awards portion of and the presentations uh, for the gala this evening. But before we close off, there's still some prizes to give out. And there is one more important trivia question. And this one is worth double the points. So you really want to get Googling on this one. Uh, before we start, before we, we ask the question though, and we really want to give a big thank you to Dolly Barton Silver. The ticker is DV on the Venture Exchange. You don't need any more luck out there with your big drilling program coming up, but we wish you all the luck in the world for your very generous sponsorship of the prizes this evening. So join, please join us in watching a short video about Dolly Barton.
The price of gold is up over 30% in the last 12 months. I believe we're in a new bull market for gold and gold miners. Uh, historically, silver lags the price of gold and then outperforms. So this is an excellent time to look at silver and silver mining stocks. If you're looking for exposure to silver, Dolly Varden offers investors a company that's operating in a safe, stable mining jurisdiction with a management team that's demonstrated the ability to unlock value for shareholders. Dolly Varden's projects are located in BC's Golden Triangle. It's a prolific mining district that has seen over 100 million ounces of gold discovered, almost a billion ounces of silver. We have a property that has produced 20 million ounces of high-grade silver. Uh, we currently have over 40 million ounces in the ground, and we have four new exciting discoveries that we're exploring. Dolly Varden has attracted Eric Sprott, New York Stock Exchange listed Hecla Mining. Between Eric and Hecla, they own 30% of the company. And now we have the capital and the targets to unlock value for shareholders. Historically, when the price of silver goes up, companies like Dolly Varden that are leveraged to the price of silver outperform by about 300%. Right, and now that you are all prepared, let's get the final question of the evening. Which U.S. president financed a silver mine at Dolly Varden in northwestern British Columbia? Was it Donald J. Trump? Was it Calvin Coolidge? Was it Richard Nixon? Or was it Herbert Hoover? But Vanessa, apparently there is rumors of a wall that is being built between Dolly Varden and Hecla Mining, which has the adjacent claims. Did you hear that? No, I didn't hear that. They're just going to drill underneath the wall, right? So that's yeah, they could they could be doing that. So um, maybe that was Donald. Um, uh, there's certainly no crooks out there, Richard mm -hmm. Nixon. Not, not a crook. crook. Not a crook. Um, what Calvin Coolidge and Herbert Hoover do? Hoover, did did he make the Hoover Dam? No, I don't think so, but it was named after him. Named after Might him. narrow it down between those two. Who could it be? Remember, this is worth double the points. And... And Matt Turner, if you guess Trump, we're going to have words. And the winner, Herbert, or the, the correct answer was, it was indeed Herbert Hoover, who was a mining engineer, actually worked all over the world, in, in Australia, in Arizona, he also financed the original Dolly Varden silver mine, which direct shipped uh, super high grade uh, uh, silver ore. So. I guess somebody wants to hear if they won a 10 ounce uh, silver ball or bar ball. And the winner first place goes to BC Rob. Was me, but congratulations, what? BC Rob. You are getting the winner of a 10 ounce silver hey. bar. Second Be place is Cactus Jan, and third place is Brant J. And just make sure you email Savannah at events with an S at ambc.ca to claim your prizes. Savannah will also put this in an email to the chat. And that's the events at aimbc.ca is what should be up. And also, don't forget to use the hashtag AME Awards Gala on Twitter for our Twitter feed coming up soon. Um, we would like to, one more time, thank the awards committee. Again, this is a volunteer association, particularly to um, one of last year's winners, Mr. Balan, uh, if you're watching, our thoughts are, are with you. Thank you so much for everything that you have done over the years for our association. Also to, uh, to, to Dave Caulfield and the rest of the committee. Thank you for all your hard work and effort and review that went into all the different submissions for the award winners. So on behalf of AME, would like to thank everyone for taking time out of this beautiful uh, uh, Thursday afternoon sunny here in the lower mainland. Uh, thank you for coming. Continue to support our industry. Uh, we are so lucky in British Columbia with all the mines and deposits that we have. 
and certainly some of the best people that go out and find them and do it responsibly. So thank you all. And also uh, one final thank you to our sponsors, our silver sponsor, Dolly Barton Silver, our bronze sponsors, Castles, Faskins, and Black Wolf Copper and Gold. And lastly, on behalf of the AME board, of which I'm past chair, the awards committee, we would like to once again congratulate all of the award recipients for 2020. Thank you for attending the Celebration of Excellence Award Gala tonight and have a safe day every day. We hope to see you at the award ceremony next year in person. Let's hope virtual is a one-off. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.